Hello and welcome to the Spark Accounting Solutions Show. I'm Jenny Q, your host, and I'm joined by Julie Babcock Hyde. She is a CPA, CFM, QuickBooks Pro Advisor, Profit First Professional, and much, 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 much more. Um, but Julie, it's great to have you here. It is fun to get together and talk about our topic today. Yes, indeed it is. Why don't you tell everybody what the topic is? Well, this was inspired originally by one of the topics that was given at um, QuickBooks Connect, which is something that like small businesses and accounting firm owners go to every year. Um, but it's something that that I've talked about before when I'm teaching business classes. Um, and it's just a really good reminder. This, you know, first quarter of the year, last quarter of the year, people are really thinking about goals. Yep. And everybody's heard of SMART goals. Um, and I wanted to just kind of revisit that topic, but also wanted to talk at the end about some goals that I see a lot of small business owners forget to make any goals around. Oh, so let's okay. not miss those either. So, yes. Okay. And also, you know, like you said, we've all heard about the SMART goals, right? But you're going to give it a little bit of a different spin. You're well, gonna... yeah, because I'm gonna be, I'm I'm worried about you being profitable and having right. your dream business, and so when I'm talking about goals, that's where I'm gonna that's where my head's gonna be always. Perfect. Yeah, I love it. Okay, can't wait. So let's jump in. So even though like this might sound familiar, goals should be specific. How does that apply to a small business owner? Well, when we're thinking about goals, like people will set weight loss goals, they'll set business goals, they'll set all kinds of things. But, you know, like a lot of times when I start talking to people about what their goals are, they'll be like, well, I want my team to be happy. Well, how do we like what does that mean? My team to be happy. Um, and so, you know, there's there's a lot of concepts out there or I want better work life balance or I want this or I want that. And so finding a way to make those specific. So like if you're looking at work life balance, maybe your goal is I'd like to have a date night with my spouse at least one time a week which that's a real thing for small business owners. Like, how do we do this work-life balance? Um, if we like have financial goals, it's not enough necessarily to say, and this is this is me being extra picky. Sometimes people will say, I want to grow revenue 10%. Okay, that's specific. But I usually challenge people to go to the next step beyond that and say, I want to grow revenue by 10% by adding two clients and raising my rates or, you know, what are the things that you're going to do sure. to get that 10% increase? Because some people can just raise their rates 10% and they're done. Mm -hmm. Some people need to get 20 more clients to raise their revenue 10%. And so really thinking about what those things mean more than just, I want more money. I want more time. How, how, how you, what specifically do you want to see happen? And how specifically do you think you are going to get there um, when you're setting these goals? Let's be let's be specific in a way that like actually like we can really judge like did this thing happen or not? Yes, very good. Very, very good. Uh, I like how you uh, brought it together because, you know, we do hear that a lot about company culture. We want a good company culture. What does that mean specifically? Yeah. So very good. Okay. Number two, here we go. Goals should be measurable. Okay. And this helps once we have something specific and we've mm -hmm. like, it's, we need 10% revenue growth. Now it's measurable because we know how we can look and see how much our revenue has grown. Um, I want better work-life balance. I want specifically, I want one date with my spouse per week. That's a measurable goal. Mm -hmm. And so it's, to me, specific and measurable often go hand in hand, because if you have a specific goal, it's going to be a lot easier to measure it. Now, other things are not as easy to measure, like, you know, like going back to this culture thing, or I want my employees to be happy. How are you going to measure that? How are you going to evaluate that? Are you going to do employee surveys? Are you going to do employee surveys on certain topics? Are you going to have them, you know, give you Google reviews between one and five every month for your own internal thing? Like, how are you going to measure that and know what direction you're trending on some of those softer 
things. Um, you have to have a plan for how you are going to measure everything. Yes, for sure. Which actually leads right into the next one, right? Because if you can't, if you if it's not specific and it's not measurable, then it's probably not going to be achievable. That's right. So as you're thinking about this achievable part of smart goals, um, number one, like how do we achieve? How do we achieve this? You know, happier people. Um, like if you don't, if you don't have anything specific that you want to do around that and you don't know how to measure it, you're not really going to know what actions you should be taking. And so you need to make sure these are achievable. One that like you have some specific things that you can do, but you also want to make sure that you're not setting yourself up for failure either when you're setting these goals. I, most people feel really good when they actually achieve a goal and check that box. And so figuring out a way to not have goals that are such stretch goals that there's no way you'll ever get there is part of this as well. Because most people, even though you tell people, you know, shoot for the moon and if you hit the stars, you'll be happy. Right. Most people aren't. <laughs> Let's be right. honest. Most people right. are not. It's like I either did it or I didn't do it. Not, oh, I'm at 80%. Yes. Like, most well, people you're are. right. Yeah. Yeah, you're totally right. And you know, uh, in like, we'll, we'll use weight loss. You, you said that at the beginning, you know, so I uh, lost half my body weight and, but I didn't start with the goal of losing half my body weight. I started right. with very, you know, at first it was this goal, then it was that goal, then it was that goal. And what that did was it allowed me every step of the way to celebrate that next step yeah. and then decide which direction I wanted to go based on my new information, right. That I got. Yeah. And, and I think that, I think you're exactly on point in, if, if it's achievable, then you get that moment of celebration and that energy of celebration takes you to the next step. Absolutely. And they've shown, like they've done studies around this about how important it is for us as small business owners to celebrate our wins. Let's be honest. Every day as a small business owner is some days it's like I had five losses and six wins and I'll take it. Or I had some days it's I had five losses and three wins. And if we don't celebrate those wins, um, if we don't celebrate those wins, it's easy to give up. And so it's it's important to set yourself up when you're doing these goals for something that is achievable so you can get that win and know that just because, you know, just because you, you know, maybe your stretch goal was here, but you set your goal here. But it honestly would have been awesome if you had gotten here. Yeah. Make sure you recognize the fact that that you got there and you achieved it. Um, I have I have seen clients before that have set goals and they're like, well, I really, it's not that great. I really wanted to do this. And I'm like, well, that's not what we put in. That's not what we put in your budget and forecast for this year. You achieved, you achieved your plan. Mm -hmm. Let's celebrate that. So anyway, I just think that's important and really take those wins and check in with yourself. This isn't part of SMART goals, but check in with yourself and understand if you are beating yourself up for no reason. Well, As yeah, well. no, that's that's super. Well, it's funny. I was about to say that's super relevant and that's our next next one. <laughs> but it is relevant because this is all mindset, really. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah for sure. OK, let's talk about relevancy with goals. Um, If you don't have goals that fit into your long-term objectives and your long-term vision for your business, um, you might achieve them, but they're not really helping you get where you want to go. So as you're thinking about setting goals for a year or for a quarter or whatever, it's really important to always begin this with the end in mind as well to make sure you're moving in the direction that you want to go. Um, if you look at kind of those overarching like like, you know, I have conversations with business owners that like want to retire in five years, or I have conversations with business owners that are just starting out and their goals are going to be different. The person that wants to retire in five years, their goals shouldn't necessarily about, be about doubling, tripling, quadrupling the business. It should be like, how do I get this ready to package so that I can sell this business? Mm -hmm. That's what their goals should be around. The, the business owner that's just starting out those are the people that should be like, okay, how do I double, triple my business this year? What does that look like? And what, you know, what, what do I do to get there? And who do I need, who do I need for team members? And, you know, 
the goals are going to be different based on your your objective. And if you don't know what that objective is, it's going to hard, be hard for you to pick relevant goals that are going to help you get to the next spot. That that makes so much sense. That's so true. But like, honestly, I had never really considered that where someone is in their business, you know, the first part of the goal is what makes it re your goals relevant, your next steps relevant. So really yeah. good. Okay. And the T for smart is goal should be time based. So it's really important as we're thinking about measuring and specificity and, you know, all of these things, we need to have a time associated with these. Now, I'm an accountant, so I think in quarters and years, but that doesn't mean you have to as a small business owner. And um, you can have goals for each month. You can have goals for each quarter. You can have goals for each day. I know people that have like specific goals for like, hey, I need, I get most of my business from referral. So I need to make sure I do, you know, five calls a day to check in with my referral network, whatever that is. You can set those goals and you need to have a time around them. Because if you're somebody that's like, okay, I want to get to 2 million in revenue. The next question is, is for me would be how and by when. Um, and so, because it could take you 10 years or it could take you 10 weeks, depending on your business, depending on what's, you know, what strategies you have, depending on what kind of cash flow you have for advertising, all of those things can play into it. And so really understanding when do I want this to happen? Is that something I want to happen daily? Is that something mm -hmm. I want to happen a month from now? Is that something I want to happen by the end of the year? And then that time helps you figure out the plan and the steps that you need to do underneath that to get there. Perfect. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So that was a great uh, summary, if you will, of how to apply SMART goals to business. But you also have uh, some more tips, like bo bonus tips, um, on how business owners should look at different areas of their business that maybe they aren't looking at? I'm going to be honest and say that the area that most people set goals around is about revenue growth. Okay. And that's oftentimes the only thing small business owners will set goals around. Mm -hmm. And that's great. That's fun. That's, you know, it's fun to say I have, you know, I, I doubled my revenue this year, but I'm going to challenge everybody as a profit first professional. Um, I want to see your profitability improve as well, not just your revenue grow. If you grow your revenue and you're still making $200,000 of net income on twice as much revenue as you were before, uh, you just doubled your business, created a whole bunch of work, and you didn't add any extra value into your life. Mm. Um, and so, like, making sure to, that's not smart, but that's a different kind of smart, right? <laughs> um, but I want to make sure you think through both the revenue side and the profitability side when you're setting goals. So that's that's one thing I encourage people to look at. Another thing around that same line is owner's comp. Um, as businesses are growing, and even as they've been around for a while, a lot of business owners are not necessarily paying themselves their fair value. Like if they were to retire and somebody else came in and ran the business, are you paying what you would be paying mm. an unrelated person to do your job, to run the business, to be the CEO? Like at some point, if you want the business to continue, if you want to sell it, somebody else is going to have to be able to step into that role and to get somebody that like maybe you'll get somebody else to come in there that'll do it for what you'll do it because you're passionate and you love your business. But realistically, at some point, if you grow big enough and you need a new CEO, yeah, you're gonna want to get paid a competitive salary for the work that they're doing. So really kind of looking at that for owners pay for yourself as well is when you're don't forget to look at that and evaluate that and make sure that you're getting paid you're getting paid what you're worth as well. Um, next, what I want to talk about really kind of ties into like also improving your profitability. And that's looking at setting goals around efficiencies. Um, and this, this works in a whole lot of different ways, but it does becoming more efficient as a business will help make you more profitable. 
And so when you are looking at your business, like figuring out a way to identify inefficiencies is important. If you already know what those areas are, you can start looking at those things. So like if you are a repair company and you have people going out to jobs multiple times, that's inefficient. If you are, you know, a service-based company and and you don't have all the information the first time you go to do a search, I'll, I'll take accounting for it as an example. And I'll take taxes because it's tax time right now as an example. If I were to start a tax return and I didn't have all the information from that client in hand, and they send me a piece today and a piece next week and a piece two weeks from now, and I touch their tax return every time I get a piece of paper in, I'm not efficient and yeah. I'm not going to make any money on that tax return. That's a great example. Yeah. And, and so, and so looking at that with your, with your stuff as well, it's like, where, where do we have inefficiencies? Where can we automate things? Where can, you know, where are we doing a lot of manual work that we, maybe we could find a way to automate? I'm looking at all of that stuff and setting goals around that. And if you don't know where you have inefficiencies, maybe your goal is let's, let's pick one spot to really dig into every quarter and see what we can find. So that's another one I like people to look at. Um, here's one that I think a lot of businesses don't look at. And with your marketing, you can weigh in on this as well. Okay. Um, but, you know, I have a lot of clients that are very interested in what's going on with their Google ratings. I have other clients that pay zero attention to it at all. But I would say, you know, setting goals around customer satisfaction is important. And from a marketing standpoint, like how does that how does that help them to actually like be worried about their Google reviews and act actively like seeking out that customer satisfaction level? So customer satisfaction is definitely a high priority with regard to Google reviews. They come into play uh, much much more heavily with local business, yeah. right? Because that when somebody searches for your type of business, you want to show up in the local search yeah. as in the top three. And that's what gets you there is your, your positive reviews. And I want to throw this out there. We'll just give a free marketing tip. And that is, it's not just getting the reviews, but it's interacting with re the reviews. And we could get into, we could do a whole show on what needs to happen to have a strong Google My Business listing, but reviews is a great place to start and make sure you always respond to every review because that tells Google that you're paying attention, even if it's a negative review. And know that you're writing that review, not just to the customer or the person who left it, you're writing it for everybody else to read because we are in a society where people make decisions based on reviews and based on uh, how they feel about a person, you know? So as the owner or whoever's running your uh, Google reviews, um, make sure that that you're you're speaking kindly. I think I, I shared this with you before that there was somebody who came out to do repair for work. And then I looked at the reviews and I couldn't believe how hostile that owner was to people who left negative reviews. And I should have checked that first. But anyway, does is that does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. And I wanted to just kind of bring that up because like that is like I know some businesses that that's like that is their measurement of their customer satisfaction. And that's not like that's one way to do it. There's other ways to do it as well. But actually like tapping into that and making sure that you've got happy customers is is important. Um, and setting some goals around that, I think, is important. Um, two other things that I see a lot of small business owners not pay any attention to. Um, and I kind of hinted at one of these at the beginning, which is like, personal goals. Do you need time away? Do you need time to actually do a hobby again? Do you need to spend more time with your family or your spouse? What are these things? I think, you know, many small business owners, you know, the joke is, hey, you know, entrepreneurs are the people that will work 80 hours for themselves so they don't have to work 40 hours for somebody else. A lot of small business owners get into that rut when they first start their business and have a hard time getting back out of it. Yep. And unless you're intentional about this and really think through like, how do I, how do I do these things? Where do I, where do you need goals around it? 
or else it's not going to happen um, because we pay attention to the things that we are tracking and measuring in our life. And so if that's something that's important to you, do it on the same kind of topic is planning time away from your business. Like you need to plan for a vacation. Totally. Where you don't check your email. <laughs> exactly. And if you have a business with a team, there's there's parts of it that's going to be easier for you to walk away and take a vacation and not check your email. And there's mm -hmm. parts of it that are going to be harder. And so one of your goals should be really thinking through it. Like, how do you plan to be able to take a vacation and actually have the business continue on without you? So um, I just see so many people forget to set goals around those areas of really, you know, okay, am I, I might have revenue goals. I might want to grow my business, but am I also growing my own wealth or am I doing all this work for nothing? Yes. Um, do I have opportunities for efficiency? Am I measuring customer satisfaction? What am I doing for my own personal life? What am I doing for time away? Um, make sure you're you're taking care of yourself and your business as you're setting goals because a lot of people do forget that. And so smart goals need to also be smart for yourself and your business too. Yes. So good. So good. And uh, back to the profitability thing, people can grab the five core chapters of Profit First from this link from your website. So it's bit.ly slash spark. PF book. It's at the bottom of your screen right now. And so that will give them a good head start uh, to know kind of what you're talking about. And if people want to contact you, what's the best way to do that? Easiest way to do that is the contact us button on our Facebook page. Or if you head over to our website, you can hit and schedule a, schedule a meeting too. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, Julie, thank you so much. Have a thank great you. rest of the day.